Hello students, welcome to the English class. I hope you are doing fine. Today we will be starting with unit 2nd and the lesson number 3rd, The Hound of the Baskerville. The story is written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was a Scottish writer and a physician as well. He is one of the most noted writers in the field of crime fiction. Other genres include science fiction, historical novels, plays and non-fiction. He gained immense popularity with the creation of a character called Sherlock Holmes, a consulting detective. Later, he wrote four novels and 56 short stories featuring his character Sherlock Holmes. It is said that he drew this character on his experiences from the world of medicine and scientific study. Various movies and series have been made using the novel in which appears Sherlock Holmes and his assistant Dr. John Watson solving murder mysteries and crimes. Now that we have discussed about the author, let us begin with the lesson. Now before directly jumping to the lesson, here is given a small box that contains a, a short murder mystery. Let me read this out to you. A man was found murdered one Sunday morning. His wife immediately called the police. The police questioned the wife and the household help. The police asked them where they were at the time of the murder. These were their replies. The wife said that she had gone out to buy vegetables. The cook said that he had been cooking breakfast. The watchman said that he had gone to the post office to collect a parcel. The gardener said that he had been watering the plants. The driver said that he had been washing the car. The police immediately arrested the murderer. Whom did they arrest and how did they know who it was? So, use your detective mind and solve this mystery out. I think it would be a fun. So, let's move further. Sure. Now, let us look at the setting of the story. The story has been set in the moors of Devon. Moors means an habitat found in the upland areas. So, the story is set in the upland area of Devon. Now, Devon is a located is situate, uh, situated in the southern part of England. The setting later changes to the Baskerville Hall where uh, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. John Watson investigate. Because this is a murder mystery, we need to look at the list of characters. Okay. So, the first and main character is Sherlock Holmes itself who is a consulting detective then Dr. John uh, Watson his assistant Lestrade a police detective Sir Hugo Baskerville an ancestor of the Baskerville estate Sir Charles Baskerville head of Baskerville estate Sir Henry Baskerville nephew and here to Sir Charles and therefore Baskerville estate. Dr. Mortimer is a family friend and doctor of Baskerville estate. Suspect number one Mr. Stapleton. Suspect number two Mrs. Stapleton who is actually Mr. Stapleton's wife but introduced in the beginning of the story as his alleged sister. Suspect number three Mr. Barrymore who is a who is a domestic helper of the Baskerville estate and suspect number four Mrs. Barrymore who is his wife. Now let's read the story. The story is set in the moors of Devon. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are investigating the mysterious death of Sir Charles Baskerville. So what do we see that Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are investigating a mysterious death. So the death is very mysterious. Don't, nobody knows how Sir Charles uh, Baskerville died. The local people think that Sir Charles Baskerville's death is connected to a 200 year old family curse. So all the people in the area believed that Sir Charles died because of a 
कर्स दैट इज अपॉन द फैमिली दैट कर्स इज टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स ओल्ड अकॉर्डिंग टू द कर्स अ मॉन्स्ट्रस डीमन डॉग रोम्स द मोर्स एंड सीक्स रिवेंज अगेंस्ट द बास्केटबॉल्स the life of sir henry baskerville the heir of sir charles might also be in danger so what does the curse says uh, that there is a monstrous demon dog a hound which is a uh, very gigantic a gigantic hound is roaming the area is roaming in the area and that hound kills every single heir to the basketball estate and that's why whoever owns the basketball estate dies so this is some sort of uh, revenge as uh, commented by people that the hound is taking some sort of re- revenge from the basketball empire and they also say now that sir charles basketball is dead the next here who is sir henry baskerville his life is also in danger watson goes to baskerville hall first and meets four people who could be possible suspects now watson who is assistant to jo- sherlock holmes he goes to baskerville hall and there he meets four people whom he thought that they might be the murderers there is barrymo and his wife then there is an archaeologist named stapleton and his sister beryl stapleton now who are the four people that he meets first is barrymore and his wife second number his wife then there is an archaeologist named stapleton mr stapleton and his sister beryl stapleton holmes meanwhile does his own in- investigation now when dr john watson was meeting these four people and you know uh, inquiring about the every uh, each and every situation holmes was doing his own investigation he was also inquiring the things and looking at the case in his own way he takes the help of lestrad a police detective and who was helping uh, sherlock holmes lestrad who is a police detective he visits baskerville hall secretly he does not let anyone knows know that uh, ba- uh, he also has visited the baskerville hall and he inquires and investigates and you know just check out each and every detail secretly with the help of lestrad and finds a striking resemblance between sir hugo baskerville whose portrait hangs on the walls of baskerville hall and stapleton now what did uh, sherlock holmes find out he finds out that sir hugo baskerville the ancestor of baskerville estate exactly you know uh, had the features to that of sir stapleton so both the person sir uh, sir hugo baskerville and mr stapleton carried equal resemblance 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 means identical they looked very identical they had same facial um, appearance okay sherlock is sure that stapleton is actually a baskerville and with sir henry dead he stands to inherit the baskerville fortune though he was a though he has a motive for murder sherlock and watson will have to catch him red handed to prove that he is guilty now sherlock when he sees that when he notices that you know St- stapleton and uh, sir hugo baskerville baskerville had a resemblance they both look alike he uh, gets sure that no uh, for sure stapleton is a family member of baskerville and that's why he wants to kill sir henry because uh, so that he can capture all the property of sir henry okay so he has a motive for murder so of course sherlock holmes could decide that no doubt stapleton has a motive motive means he has a reason to kill sir henry so that he can uh, get all the property okay more importantly so what he did sherlock and watson decide that they will have to catch him and they have to collect proofs 
okay without proofs they could not prove that uh, stapleton is the is doing all this thing and he is going to kill sir henry so they had to collect some proofs so they decide to collect proofs so that they can prove him guilty they can prove him culprit more importantly they have to save sir henry before it is too late but what was the most important thing that right, uh, at that time that before proving stapleton as guilty as the murderer they had to save sir henry so that at least he can be saved okay otherwise what will happen in order to just you know prove stapleton guilty they might lose sir henry how will they how will they do it read on to find out so here uh, up till now we have been given the background we have been given the situations we have uh, we have been given uh, the actually order of the story now what happens next to solve the mystery we picked up lestrade at the railway station and arrived at baskerville hall paying off the carriage we walked across the moor in the moonlight until we reached the path leading to meripit house my nerves were tensed as we walked with the cold wind on our faces and dark empty spaces on either side we here refers to sherlock holmes and dr john watson they pick up lestrade from the railway station and together they go to baskerville hall uh, and they go there through the carriage they took some cart and uh, then they walked towards meripit house meripit house is the place where mr stapleton lived my nerves were tensed now who is my here my is john watson john watson is the narrator in the story my nerves were tensed as we walked with the cold wind on our faces and dark empty spaces on either side now watson says that he he uh, could feel the cold wind on his face that's made him nervous and uh, on either sides on both side one could see the darkness and the empty space only my god it doesn't seem a very cheerful place said lestrade now when lestrade looked at looked around he saw that it was quite dark and it was quite empty area so he felt sort of negative and uh, sort of scared so he said that definitely this place is not something one would love to visit or you know get excited about we moved silently and carefully until homes stopped us about 200 yards from the house this will do he said we can hide behind these rocks on the right watson you know the place creep forward quietly and see what they are doing now as they were moving silently and carefully so that no one could see them homes suddenly stopped all of them just before the house and uh hinting that this much distance is quite appropriate he uh, suggested that they could hide behind the rocks and as uh, watson had visited the place earlier he asked watson to just move uh, uh, ahead and uh, see what the uh, what the suspects were doing as because he was going to visit stapleton's house so of course he was going to you know just uh, just keep an eye over mr stapleton as what he was doing what he was planning to do i tiptoed down the path till i could look through the window sir henry and stapleton were sitting at the round table with coffee and wine in front of them stapleton was talking in a lively manner but sir henry looked pale so now watson walked very silently towards the path and tried to look through the window what sir henry and stapleton were doing in the house what he saw that they were sitting across a round table and uh, there was this coffee and wine on the table stapleton was trying to have a nice conversation right lively manner lively manner means in a happy way in a joyful way so he was trying to have a conversation in a lively manner but sir henry looked pale pale means yellowish so he was yellow with 
fear he was scared if sir stapleton could would attack him you say the lady is not there holmes asked when i had told them what i had seen so when holmes asked john watson if the lady was there or not who is lady here lady stapleton so john watson had already told holmes what he had seen yes and there is no light in any other room either and also watson told holmes that there was no light in any other room a dense white fog hung over the great grimpen mire and was slowly moving in our direction now what they saw that there was this dense and white fog over the great grimpen mire mire is the area of is the area where there is this wet mud in which one can easily drown the hindi word for this mire is daldal okay so what they saw there was this huge dense white fog over which they could not see anything else holmes turned his face towards it now holmes looked at the uh, fog that fog is the one thing upon the earth that could have upset my plans now he got a little bit depressed that he said that the only thing that can ruin my plans that can uh, you know destroy my planning is this fog only but it's already 10 o'clock our success and sir henry's life depends on his coming out before the fog is over the path now what he thinks that it's already 10 o'clock it's too late um, so he thinks that uh, he they could only succeed if sir henry comes out of the house before the fog surrounds the area and covers the area as the fog came curling around the house holmes dropped on his knees and put his ear to the ground thank heavens i think i hear him coming now when he saw that fog was slowly slowly covering the entire house area holmes dropped on his knees he just lied down and put his ear on the ground so that he could hear the footsteps approaching and what he says thank heavens that means he thanks god that finally because he could un- hear the footsteps approaching so he uh, he thought that maybe sir henry is coming out a sound of quick steps broke the silence we stared keenly at the path the steps grew louder and through the fog came the man we were waiting for he walked swiftly along the path passed close to where we were hiding and went on as he went on he kept looking uneasily over his shoulders so what what they observed later that the footsteps were very quick now and in a in a moment they could see that someone was coming out right from the path and that person was to- uh, walking very swiftly that means as if running uh, to somewhere else and that person instantly crossed them and went on walking as the person was walking fastly he just kept looking back over his shoulders as if uh, watching if someone is following him or not just then watson saw what that holmes took out his revolver and warned that someone was coming from the path we stared into the fog and then i saw holmes lips part in amazement while lestrade gave a yell of terror now they were just staring into the fog because uh, the path was covered with the fog and they were just trying to look at, look who was coming out of the house now and uh, what he saw that home slips part in amazement as if his mouth was wide open now while lestrade gave a yell of terror yell means a sharp cry he shouted with fear he was scared i was frozen by the sight of the dreadful shape which came leaping towards us now john watson himself got scared by what he saw coming out from the path what he saw that 
some dreadful shape that means what he saw was something monstrous so he himself got so scared it was a hound an enormous coal black hound but such a hound human eyes had never seen fire burst from its mouth its eyes glowed and its jaws were outlined in flickering flame it seemed like a hound from hell now how john watson describes this hound it was the hound that had coal black color an enormous that means gigantic in size a huge one in size and this hound had human eyes the big ones it felt like that the fire was coming out of out from its mouth and its eyes were glowing right as if some kind of light is put in its eyes its jaws were outlined outlined means its jaws had an outline in the border in flickering flame flickering means someone that is uh, that is on and off right as if the flame is just putting on and off it it looked like as if it was a hound from hell with long bounds the huge creature bounded down the track following hard upon the footsteps of sir henry we were so stunned that we let it pass then holmes and i both fired together and the creature gave a hideous howl which meant that it had been hit now what they saw that the hound could take huge jumps and he uh, that it was following sir henry very fast now lestrade sherlock holmes and john watson they all were so shocked that they could not stop the hound at first but soon holmes and watson both fired at the hound and the shot was right on the place and then hound gave a dreadful howl that means it uh, it cried in pain but it did not pause far away on the path we saw sir henry looking back his face white in the moonlight his hands raised in horror but even after getting shot the hound did not stop and they could see that sir henry was uh, was totally white as if you know he is just so scared that he knows that he is going to die now the that cry of pain from the hound had blown our fears to the winds if we could wound it we could kill it now what they analyzed that when they shot the hound and they saw that the hound cried in pain he, uh, just right at that moment all of their fear that it's it is a monstrous hound it is it can kill anyone it all their fear just vanished away how because they thought it was some sort of curse but uh, such curse cannot be you know uh, cannot be removed by some human powers so when they realized that it can be shot and it can be wounded they understood that they can kill this hound never have i seen a man run as homes ran that night ahead of us we heard sir henry scream and the deep roar of the hound now what watson see that homes run as fast as he could he had never seen homes running that much fast and ahead of them he could hear what sir henry screaming he was screaming with fear and the hound was howling i was in time to see the beast spring upon its victim hurl him to the ground and reach for his throat but the next instant holmes had emptied his revolver into the creature now watson uh, when watson reached the spot what he saw that the hound was just about to kill sir henry by clutching him through his throat but the next moment holmes came there and shot the hound with each and every single bullet of his revolver with the last roar of agony it rolled upon its back its four feet bowing the air and then fell limp on its side now the hound cried in pain 
it its four feet were in the air and in a moment it uh, it was lying lifeless over there sir henry lay in a faint we loosened his collar and holmes breathed a pair of thanks when he saw that we had been in time already our fr friend's eyelids shivered and two frightened eyes looked up at us now when they looked at Hen sir henry what they saw that he was almost unconscious so they loosened their collar he they opened their his collar buttons and Holmes also took a sigh of relief that they were just right on the time. When Sir Henry opened his eyes, he saw Watson and Sherlock Holmes. My God, he whispered, what was it? What in heaven's name was it? He was so scared that he, he, could, he could scarcely say something and he was just clueless as what he saw right in front of his eyes it's dead said holmes we have laid the family coast to rest once and forever now holmes informed sir henry that the hound is dead now and what he says that it uh, he laid the family coast to rest what it means that means uh, the hound was supposed uh, as a curse upon the family so he said that this was the family ghost and this was the family enemy so he has put the rest to this family ghost forever in sheer size and strength it was a terrible creature which lay stretched before us even now the huge jaws seemed to be dripping with bluish flame and the small deep set cruel eyes were ringed with fire i touched its jaws and as I held up my own fingers, they gleamed in the darkness. Now, what they saw that this creature was so huge and uh, terrible in size. And even after the hound was dead, he could see that, uh, you know, some bluish flame was dripping out. That means it was just, you know, flowing out of his, its mouth. And he could see the eyes were so monstrous and as if uh, there was some ring of fire in it i touched its jaws and when he touched its jaws he uh, he saw that his fingers were also glowing in the darkness phosphorus i said cleverly prepared to have no smell as it would have interfered with the dog's sense of smell we owe you a deep apology sir henry for letting you face this fright i was prepared for a hound but not for such a creature as this and the fog gave us little time to receive him now watson was very quick to identify that the that the liquid coming out of its jaws was phosphorus he concludes that this phosphorus was used in uh, in the hound with such a cleverness that it had no smell so that it would not interfere with the appearance of the hound they also ap apologized to sir henry for uh, he had to face such uh, such terrible situation because they were prepared to face the hound and they did not have any single idea that they might be facing such terrible creature okay and this uh, fog also was so dangerous that they had no such enough time to just plan about everything you saved my life but we first endangered it are you strong enough to stand he staggered to his feet but he was still pale and trembling no more adventures tonight said holmes wait here and one of us will go back to the hall with you now sir henry thanked Watson and Holmes and Lestrade to save his life to which Holmes uh, quickly replied that they were the ones who put it into the danger and he asked Sir Henry if he was feeling well enough and uh, as he could see that uh, Sir Henry was still uh, scared and uh, he was shivering so he um, said that it's enough of the adventure for t 
tonight because they had dealt with such a dangerous situation and he suggested sir henry to rest until one of them drop him safely to the baskerville hall we helped him to the shelter of a rock where he sat shivering while we walked towards meribet house now they uh, took him to the shelter and made him sit over there and he was still trembling with fear while they went to the meribet house and searched for some uh, for some proof you can say they find beryl who is actually mrs stapleton now what they see that there was uh, a lady tied over there and who was that beryl stapleton who was uh, in the in beginning introduced to us as sister of mr stapleton she is later discovered as wife of mr stapleton she was bound and gagged in an upstairs room of meribet house she leads them to stapleton's secret hideout now she was tied uh, in that room so they helped her out and then she finally took them to a secret place of stapleton but by the time they reach the secret place stapleton is dead having slipped and fallen into the mire so when they reached the secret place of stapleton they were actually late to reach there because when they actually got there they saw that stapleton is already dead because he slipped and fell into the mire so what we saw that the hound was also killed at the same place and stapleton was found dead at the same place so it can be easily concluded that the hound was none other than mr stapleton himself he disguised himself as a gigantic hound used various chemicals just to look more horrifying and terrible somehow sherlock holmes had got the idea of was what mr stapleton was planning to do that's why he had been following mr stapleton to catch him red handed so here we come to the end of the story i hope all of you must have understood the story if not please go through the video again and watch it clear carefully thank you